there are a number of people who follow my perspective on life and how that manifests itself as health and illness and specifically as cancers and things that we can do in an attempt to minimize uh, a cancer and to in fact get rid of cancers frequently. So to start with we have to again appreciate that flowing energy organizes matter and we get our flowing energy from the food that we eat and most of our cellular energy comes from the carbohydrates and the fats that we eat. The carbohydrates promote the differentiated functions of our cells and our tissues, etc. How they coordinate to differentiate and provide us things like our nervous system and our muscles and our hormones, etc. On the other hand, if we are burning fat, it's not the same as burning carbohydrates. Quite interestingly, it turns on what's known as autophagy, autophagy, self-eating. But autophagy occurs in a non-random fashion. Specifically, it repairs damaged cellular components. And those components were damaged by free radicals, in particular, when we are in a more carbohydrate burning mode, when we're using the nuclear reactor within our cells, so to speak, our electron transport system. So when there's any perturbation that leaks free radicals, those free radicals in turn are basically like radiation, because radiation produces free radicals just the way our metabolism does. But when we turn on fat burning, we eat that stuff. We eat our damaged pieces, and that recycles us and promotes the flow so that we consume and then integrate into us new. And that occurs on all levels and at different speeds. You know, we replace our bones, our brains, everything uh, over time. So what we want to be able to do is optimize that process of promoting health. But in the case of cancer cells, we want to use that knowledge to kill them. Most cancer cells start out as sugar burners because if we trap a metabolic state, and watch my videos regarding those concepts, if we trap a metabolic state that then promotes uh, the conversion of our DNA to satisfy the needs of that genetic state, of that metabolic state, we basically, it's like molecular Lamarckianism. Um, so the point here is what we want to do with a fresh cancer cell uh, is we want to kill it by turning off its fuel supply. And the reason most cancer cells like sugar is because they get trapped metabolically when you treat with chemo, for example, or with your body defenses. Uh, you can trap the cell in, in um, S phase which is when the cells are synthesizing their DNA. And when they're in that phase, they have typically turned off the electron transport system, the nuclear energy, and have turned on uh, aerobic glycolysis, which is another inefficient way of generating energy, but a safe way, and one that can have tremendous capacity as well, occurs in the cytoplasm. Um, so anyway, what we, when you trap that metabolic state, you then select for the DNA that accommodates that state, and that's why most cancers have mutations that foster uh, this aerobic glycolysis where the carbohydrates are only partially burnt uh, because of the inefficiency of the process, uh, produce heat, and um, are not easy to kill because it's amplification of imbalances that occur in the electron transport system that are what account ultimately for cell death. And keep in mind that the mitochondria, which is where both fat and efficient carbohydrate metabolism is occurring, has now CB1 receptors demonstrated to be on the surface. So they're not only on the surface of the cells, but they're on the surface of the mitochondria where they are regulating things like calcium channels, which regulate activation of differentiated functions, as opposed to CB2 activation, which turns on fat burning. So when you have fresh cancers that haven't been screwed around with uh, by chemo and selection pre procedures, those cells don't do well to adjusting to the lack of their, their fuel. And when you turn on fat burning, that basically can screw them up. And that's how so many of the different Chinese herbs, as well as cannabis, as well as numerous other treatments. That's how they wind up causing cancer cells to die 
because they force them into fat burning mode and these very um, devoted sugar burners can't make that switch without dying. But if you train them and um, with chemo, for example, then they learn how to go back and forth. And those are the ones that kill people. Those are the ultimate drug-resistant cells. So under those circumstances, you now have to do extra things in order to try to overload the cells with free radicals. So while on the one hand, you typically we keep fat burning on with high doses of cannabis, as well as vitamin D, which also turns on fat burning, as well as polyunsaturated fatty acids, things like the cannabinoids themselves, but uh, other forms in fish oil, DHA and EPA, are long chain fatty acids that are converted to endocannabinoids. And these are also found in mother's milk. And these are also major components of your brain. And you can't make them, you gotta consume them. So if you don't consume them, you're screwing yourself right off the bat. But when you start consuming more of a high fat diet and consume uh, good fats, nuts, seeds, oils, hemp oil, etc., all these things, um, you wind up shifting the body's balance entirely and promote these regenerative functions that occur because your cannabinoids also regulate stem cells. So the things that uh, seem to be effective from observation and theory are that you, you know, we, we're typically treating people uh, with we have an organization called Second Chance uh, where we're treating people with typically um, high doses of cannabis and about 12 days consecutive as possible of high dose vitamin C intravenous where you take basically your body's weight in grams instead of kilograms. Uh, very high doses and you need the right person to do that. Uh, along with high doses of vitamin D, the polyunsaturated fatty acids, alpha lipoic acid, um, that collection of compounds really promote fat burning. And the vitamin C, uh, what it does is it introduces free radicals. It works opposite of the way people typically think of it, as opposed to being an antioxidant when it's in your blood with high concentrations of iron, like in your blood, it generates free radicals. So now this is fostering a kind of a body overload, but the cancer cells are the ones that suffer because those are the ones that have been stretched out by various treatments and selective procedures. So they have a limited ability to continue to stretch their ability to deal with free radicals. So it seems to work. Bye.